Hello, my name is Rainer Hanekamp. This is Engine News with the latest updates from the Angular community every week. Angular 19 has been released. First things first, be sure to run ng update or nx migrate and avoid to use npm install. Don't be surprised if all your components, directives, and pipes are changed by the update script. Standalone is now the default. The update script removes standalone true from all components while ng-module-based components will now have standalone false. Now to the two main feature sets. We have utility functions for signals and we got incremental hydration. Linked signal is a function which can clone a signal. That clone is writable, but the changes to the clone will have no impact to the original. Whereas when the original changes, it overrides its clone. Typical use cases are, for example, template-driven forms, where the ng model changes the values directly. So you want to have those changes on a working copy and not on the original. Another use case is a signal, which is linked to another one. For example, the parent component passes down the signal representing an ID, and the child component has a state which is linked to that ID. Once the ID changes, you want to have a reset for that child state. Linked signal is in developer preview, so breaking changes within the major are possible, but the functionality itself is stable. Next, the resource function. That is the answer for signals that want to receive their value from an asynchronous task. Most of the time, that's going to be an HTTP request. And the speciality of the resource is that it manages race conditions by canceling HTTP requests without using RxJS. That being said, there is also an RxJS part version called Rx Resource. Now both functions are still in experimental status. That means breaking changes are very likely, but it is a fundamental milestone because it shows the direction Angular is heading to when it comes to signals and their optional RxJS approach. The other main feature was incremental hydration. It allows us to define certain regions in our template that are being hydrated based on certain criteria. For example, if your user interacts with it after a certain amount of time or never, that hydrate never command makes sense if your component don't have a dynamic nature. Incremental hydration derived from a partnership with Google's internal framework WIS, which powers Google Search, Gmail, and other applications which have an immense requirement for performance. Although incremental hydration might not be for everyone, especially internal applications very often don't require it, it opens up Angular for a complete new group of developers and use cases especially for those that had to use frameworks like Remix, Next.js, or Quick, that provide solutions for applications that require an instant load and uh, where we have to be very efficient when it comes to downloading JavaScript on the browser. For more information, you can read the official blog post, you can watch the release event on YouTube, and also the Q&A session with Mark and Jeremy from the Angular team. A massive amount of community content was also published. And since I don't want to be unfair and highlight only specific people, please, if you have written an article, a blog post, recorded a video or something else, then please put the link below in the comments. And that's it. I wish you a nice week and see you in the next episode. Goodbye.